Michigan with X-Ray Charles. So you're going to use an imaginary line. Why don't you go ahead and put your left foot, left foot down. Alcohol, speed, and non-use of occupant restraint devices are things that are showing up in most all serious injury or fatal crashes. And that's, that's what this program is designed to do. Detect and apprehend the people that are leading to those, those collisions and leading to the point where they're going to have collisions before it happens. Project CEASE is a multi-agency educational and enforcement police traffic service grant, which is funded by the Michigan Office of Highway Safety Planning and the U.S. Department of Transportation. And this grant's awarded to law enforcement agencies in St. Joseph County, specifically the Michigan State Police at White Pigeon, Sturgis Police Department, and the St. Joseph County Sheriff's Department. Uh, we decided something needed to be done because the number of fatalities was way too high for a county our size. Okay, uh, St. Joseph County is rather unique in the cooperative uh, manner in which departments get along. Uh, a lot of areas you see a lot of friction and infighting between departments. Uh, uh, here we're very fortunate that we don't have that. We're, uh, we all realize there's a job to do, a job to be done. The components for Project CEASE, and CEASE stands for Coordinated Education, Alcohol and Speed Enforcement, include training of 56 officers from the three agencies in two areas. One, occupant protection, usage, and enforcement, and that's basically seat belts and child restraint seats. And the other is standardized field sobriety testing. We feel that the three biggest reasons in St. Joseph County for serious fatal traffic accidents or injury traffic accidents are speeding, um, alcohol usage in some way, or uh, by not using your seat belt. And so what we're trying to do with programs such as the airspeed timing is to slow the people down. In this particular area that we are doing airspeed timing, it actually residents line this road. It's not a freeway. And uh, we have traffic merging in and out from intersections. We've clocked cars going through there as high as 92 miles per hour in a 55 zone. And your vehicle at that speed and, uh, and to avoid accidents. The road stopped uh, in the right-hand lane, okay. Okay, thanks, Bill. This traffic services project is a basic time, speed, distance problem. We have a known distance of 1,320 feet. That's a quarter mile. With that 1,320 feet, we can visually clock someone through that distance and mathematically determine how fast they are going. And at that point, I can call down, if it's a violator, I can call down to a waiting patrol car, have them make the stop, I'll advise them of the violation, of the speed, and the time it took for them to get through which of the four zones that we clock them through. Okay, you're going by an hour. Go by an hour. Right hand right there. We can reduce the speed, getting people to think about their speed, wondering if we're in the air, reminding them that the speed limit is 55, then our uh, efforts will prove positive. 31, Claire. The drunk and impaired drivers are killing a lot of people out on the streets. We hear a lot of them. What we're trying to do is to uh, teach the officers how to detect the drunk driver and how to uh, evaluate the drunk driver and to get them at a lower uh, blood alcohol content level instead of getting the drunk driver that's at a 0 .30 that's so drunk that he can barely stand we're trying to lower it down to close to the point one zero, where it's just over the legal limit. Did he sway while he had his foot up? A little bit. Was he swaying? Would that be a clue? Yeah. Okay. How many clues are there? Well you get... How many clues can you check the person off for? You get four. Okay. And if he fails two, then he's gone. Okay. What is the percentage of reliability? 65%. Very good. 
what we're going to be doing is we bring people into the department here and dose them with alcohol. What that is is I try to get them to a certain alcohol level. The officers here that are going through the class will then evaluate whether or not they would arrest the person. Good, let's do that. Oh, so it's my lead, right? Yeah, but watch oh, Glenda, she's like looking at your hand. <laughs> <laughs> you think that's fun? Fine. What I'm going to ask you to do, in other words, on my opinion, if you're intoxicated or not. Okay, what I'd like to do and one. like our last class that we ran, the people said, man, that was really amazing that I can drink this much and I would be drunk driving. He said, I've done this before and I didn't realize that, that I was over the legal limit. It gave them a new perspective of what, what um, the legal limit is in the state of Michigan. Okay, this is the, uh, the August summary put in, uh, first, uh, the top page is the total uh, combined efforts of everybody, kind of see where we're at, doing surveys, uh, it's one of the last things we're doing, uh, is surveys, pre-survey, mid-grant survey, and post-survey, to see the effectiveness of enforcement in the area of occupant restraints. Uh, are more people buckling up, and then we compare the traffic crashes, the data that we have compiled, to see whether these things that we've done have truly made a difference in traffic safety traffic crashes, injuries, and deaths in St. Joseph County. What the public should know is that uh, speed, moderate speeds, seat belt usage, and uh, not drinking and driving are the essential keys for safe operation on our streets and highways. It, it's fairly simple. We want them to know that this program is there for their benefit. We want them to know that the motoring public and the community support it. They don't have to financially support it. That's already taken care of. What they have to do is support it through voluntary compliance of traffic laws. If people obey traffic laws, our jobs can be much easier. I would like the community to be aware of that we are going to be out there. In the past, uh, it could have been uh, part of a good old boy type syndrome where you caught somebody who was drinking and driving and you took them home. That's not the case anymore. We don't do that at all. If you're caught drinking and driving, you go to jail, uh, plain and simple. We want to tell them that we're here to save lives. Uh, maybe their life, maybe a relative, maybe a friend, maybe a loved one. Uh, but we're here to save lives, uh, number one. We urge the public uh, to take their responsible role and practice safe driving habits. While we've done good, we can do better. And yes, it will be successful and it will all be worth whatever's put into it. It's worth it when you see children buckled up instead of standing up in motor vehicles. Uh, it's worth it every time we go to a crash and find out that because the occupants and the drivers took the initiative to take a few seconds to buckle a safety belt or strap a child in a child's safety seat, that because of that effort, 